I love playing guitar. I'm not very good at guitar, but I love cheap guitars. I love to collect stuff and I buy guitars all the time and I'm about to unbox my 20th guitar in my collection. I wasn't really looking for anything. You never really are, right? But there's always, oh, just one more, just one more. And I was on eBay and I saw something quite interesting. It was a brand that I'd never heard of. And the specs look pretty impressive for what it was. And also, I noticed that on YouTube, there was not a ton of videos about this guitar. Now, what usually happens is a cheap guitar gets launched. It becomes part of the zeitgeist and all these awesome channels that I love, like Scar My Guitar and Average Joe's Gear Shack. Like, I watch all their videos, even though... You know, the Squire debut series came out and every single YouTuber, there's now 50, you know, different videos that I've seen on the Squire debut. I know everything I need to know about the Squire debut and someday I'll probably have one and it'll be the same as every other cheap strat I have. And maybe this one behind me will be as well, but we're going to unbox it today because not only is it an interesting guitar that there's not a ton of material on YouTube about, but also because I had an interesting experience purchasing it, which I'll explain in a second, and I, it serves the purpose of actually unboxing it on this video. So, what is a guitar? The guitar is a Bad Cat Polaris PS310, which you can see on their website here. They sell for $150, and that is is that includes free shipping and i know this uh, window is kind of covering my face i don't care um that includes free shipping and the specs are again the specs kind of impressed me the neck shape is not something i worry about too much i have so many different guitars i have different neck shapes i've never found that to be an issue for me i have big hands and gangly fingers um 18 to 1 ratio tuning keys okay Alnico 5 single, single, single Strat uh, pickups, hand polished titanium alloy frets, and a bone nut. So these are pretty decent specs for a guitar that on their website, you know, they show it as a markdown from 269. But I put one of these in the cart and it came up with free shipping as well. So if you want one of these, you can get it for 150. This is not a sponsored video. Bad Cat has never heard of me. I had never heard of them until I saw this listing on eBay. And I'll show you the listing and why it was interesting to me is because um, the listing was for this guitar which is now out of stock, but you'll see here they had four of them, which they sold. So they sold four of these guitars, but it's noted as having light damage. So they have a set of pictures here with some condition issues, like no straight up, like there's some dings in it, um, but they had four in stock and I bought the th third one, I guess, the second to last one. So I'm very interested to see that ah, the tuners look good. Um, I'm very interested to see what the actual condition is like. So let me see if I can get my cursor back on OBS to get this thing off my face. So let's get right into it. Um, again, I'm not a good guitarist. This is going to be more just like a fun. Hey, I bought a cheap guitar. Let's see what it looks like. Unfortunately, I I don't I don't quite enjoy. I'm going to be honest with you and maybe maybe I'll be throwing some shade at a lot of guitar YouTubers. But on a guitar review, I don't want to hear you play the guitar. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like unless it sounds like drastically different from every other guitar, like I have a Boss Katana, I have a modeling amp. I can make any guitar sound like whatever I want. The one exception was there's this YouTuber, Harry and the Guitar, I think is his name. And he did a review of a Jet uh, JS300, which is a guitar I have that I absolutely love. 
And while I was waiting for my JS300 to get delivered, I watched his review of it, which was basically him playing the guitar for 20 minutes. And it was the most awesome demo of a guitar I've ever seen. And I watched the whole thing. I've watched it multiple times just because the playing was out of this world. But in general, I don't like that. So I'm not going to do that. We might do a function check, but I didn't prep the shooting. I didn't prep the filming area to do any kind of uh, live audio here. So they did an incredible packing job on this. I'm trying to get into my desk here to get my scissors. Now, let me ask you this, guitar people. Do you believe in acclimation? What that means is when you buy a guitar and you have it shipped to you, do you leave it in the box for 24 hours? And for those who are unaware, the reason we do this, as some of us do, <laughs> is because all the wood has to acclimate to your humidity and temperature in your house because it's coming from a different part of the country potentially. And it's also been on the delivery truck and I'm filming this in July and I live in North Carolina, which is about a million percent humidity every day right now. Um, I, have, I have dehumidifiers running in my house, but I didn't want to shock the guitar by just pulling it out of the box yesterday so it has been in the box for 24 hours and after the first i don't know six to ten hours i can't remember i actually opened the box to let the process start it's not a very scientific process it's just what i do and I'll just talk about a couple other things, reasons why I wanted this guitar. The name, the bad cat. <laughs> you guys have heard my bad cats on plenty of videos when they're carrying on and making noise in the background. So I thought I like that. I like that the headstock shape is very close to Fender. They didn't, I don't know how they're getting away with it, but they have a very Fender-ish headstock not a deal breaker for me when it's not but I really appreciate it when companies either get away with it or they, they just go for it sometimes they get caught like IYV some of their older models have a very fendery headstock and then they changed it I'm lucky my IYV Mustang has the old style headstock I'm almost there, I promise. This is excruciating, and I apologize for underestimating how well this was packed. But I'm grateful for how well it was packed. No more crinkling of bubble wrap. Here's the guitar. The first thing that catches my eye is the discoloration on the pickguard here, which actually pretty much matches the pictures that were on the eBay listing. I'm hoping the discoloration is just in the pickguard cover. There's okay. So there's the pickguard film is still on the pickguard. Let me see if I can get this up a little bit. No, so it's actually in the pickguard, this yellow crap. Um, so Maybe I'll replace a pick card. I don't know if it's a standard size, but maybe not. We got some sticker residue here. That'll come right off. We got uh, just some something, some schmutz on there. But again, this, this pick card still has the film on it. The knobs seem fine. Now here's something. There's a screw. There was a screw magnetized to the middle pickup. So I'm not sure... Uh, hopefully that's not missing from something. Um, I don't see any screws missing on the back plate or the neck plate. The strap buttons are both intact. 
I'm not seeing any chips. So maybe this isn't maybe this isn't the same one that was in the picture because the picture had some chips in the body. This guitar, the neck pocket doesn't even have any. I mean, so far I'm pretty impressed. There's no chips in the finish of the body of the guitar, which the pictures on eBay had uh, a couple, I believe. So I know it's hard to see because I just use a crappy webcam, but uh, this sparkly finish kicks ass. I think it's gorgeous. It's a shame that the pickguard has that uh, yellow stuff on it. I do have uh, I do have a spare white Strat style pickguard, so hopefully it'll fit on this thing. Now let's look at the man. This neck feels really nice. Holy crap! This feels like one of my classic vibes. I have two. I have a '60s classic vibe Strat and a '70s classic vibe Strat. This feels like the '60s one, which is. These frets are, I guess they're the kind that are like rounded off or whatever. Now I just noticed there's a, um, there's a ding here on the first fret, a tiny little ding on the second fret. That's not something that's going to affect my playing. Again, I'm not a good guitar player. I've been a beginner for 30 years. <laughs> I just like to make noise and uh, screw around. But this headstock is beautiful. Look at this. It has like a gloss to it. I love the insignia, the writing, the logo, whatever you want to call it. I like the star up here. Um, I don't see a... I don't see a serial number anywhere. I guess they're not serialized. But these are the okay-ish tuning machines you don't see uh trapezoidal tuning machines t too much anymore the um really crappy ones that we used to have in the 90s um i'm sure they're still used but man i'm super happy with this guitar so far the only major knock against it is that yellow crap in the pick guard so let's Let's see how the action looks. I mean, it feels good. I'm not even going to bother tuning it. Ever. I'll just play it like this forever. Um, it feels good to play so far. I, I'll have to tune it up change the strings i always put strings on every guitar i buy clean clean them up you know i gotta get it on the bench and get this that label residue will come right off um with label residue you can use well actually i don't want to say what i use because i don't know if it's the best thing to use for a guitar um google it don't listen to me but I don't know. Bad Cat Polaris. I the jury's out on how it'll sound, but if I had paid 150 in free shipping, I'd probably still be happy. But I got this guitar for sixty dollars in free shipping. They had it listed for seventy and change, so I went with my eBay strategy. I put it in my watch list and actually kind of forgot about it. A few days later, I got an offer from the seller. $60 in free shipping. There was no counter offer, so I couldn't low ball even further than that. But yeah, I'm stoked about this. I think the finish is good. Everything's glossy. This is giving me classic vibe vibes. I know everybody says that, but um, that is kind of the standard for high end, cheaper guitars. So is this a high end guitar? I guess that remains to be seen, but it is 
hefty. I believe it's a full full thickness body. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. And as far as cheap guitars go, this is not the cheapest guitar I've ever bought because I, I actually bought a, uh, a kit guitar that somebody was building and kind of gave up on and just kind of gave it away on reverb. And I bought it and put a little work into it. It's a pretty cool guitar, but that was sixty dollars shipped and it came with a gig bag and it came with a an extra loaded pick guard which is the pick guard i might steal for this guitar but yeah this was fun i i know it was a little obnoxious with the bubble wrapping and everything but if you're still here uh thanks for watching this odd video of mine this will not become a guitar channel i like the guitar channels that are out there already go check them out average joe's gear shack scar my guitar uh jace allen there's a bunch of awesome channels out there so thanks for stopping by uh and checking out my new bad cat polaris